please hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you will get all things Duty Ron when I go live or upload another video. Tonight I have some, I have several special guests from EquiSearch Midwest. We're going to talk about the search for Summer Wells. We're going to talk in general about what these folks did from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, this weekend. And we're going to also speak about some of the technologies that were used by this organization. Um, again, by a show of hands, just let me know in the chat if the audio is good and the video is good by just putting a thumbs up or a number one in the chat. So this way we know you guys can hear us. Uh, and then I'll start adding in my guests. But before I add in the 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 guests, I'm going to show a quick one minute and 40 second video of our good friend, Gene Robinson. This is a little old. Um, he looks actually a little more handsome right now in current day. So uh, we're going to play. Uh, this is a clip of Tim Miller and uh, Gene Robinson flying the whirly bird, flying his uh, his drone. So we're going to show you that. Thank you for all the number ones. And I want to say a special thank you to the replay viewers. I know we're on late tonight, and I especially, especially thank the replay viewers. Yeah, there's there's quite a few folks here in the live chat, but uh, I want to spe especially thank the replay viewers, the moderators, the Patreon supporters, the subscribers to this community. You guys are what makes this a great community, all of your interaction. So let's get this rocking and rolling so I can... Uh, of course, of course, I'm not prepared for this. Uh, <laughs> here we go. All right, I'm going to share it now. All right, this is Gene Robinson, folks, of Midwest EquiSearch. At this time, they're going to say Texas EquiSearch because he was demonstrating uh, for Tim Miller. So here we go. Here's our good friend Gene in action. Gene Robinson volunteers his time and his radio-controlled aircraft to help Texas EquiSearch find missing people. We can work anywhere from a half to a mile away. Now, how long can you stay up with one of these, Gene? About an hour. It's got an electric motor that puts out just enough power to maintain forward momentum in a 50-mile-an-hour wind. He equips the drones with digital cameras that can produce high-resolution photos, infrared images, even live-streaming video. It's amazing the pictures that you can get shooting an area from about 400 feet. We can cover one square mile in about 10 minutes. Wow. Nice landing. In some cases, volunteers spend hours analyzing the pictures. They use GPS coordinates to direct searchers on the ground to specific areas. It's not always easy to convince people about the advantages of new technology. I think I remember when the sheriff showed up out there when Gene showed up. And we all love Tim Miller. He is on the mend. We're going to have some updates for Tim Miller. So please put some hearts in the chat for our great, great friend, the founder of uh, Texas AquaSearch, uh, Tim Miller. Showed up and Gene got his little airplane out that's only this big. A little Gene airplane. His, showed up out there when Gene showed up and Gene got his little airplane out that's only this big and he looked at gene and he shook his head and said what are you going to do with that and the sheriff got in his car and drove away and then gene called him the next day and said well you just better come out here and see what we did with that we had imaged the entire area using high resolution digital imagery went back to the hotel room started looking at the images and uh we found a white speck and uh, that speck ended up being a tennis shoe and we walked to that tennis shoe, and there was David Pettiot, who had been missing for almost six months. Amazing. Amazing. This is some of the great work that uh, these folks do. Um, and I can't say enough good about this technology uh, and the folks of Texas AquaSearch Midwest chapter. Here we go. I'm wearing my um, swag that I got from Dave. I got my. Lost is not alone. I'm rocking all of my EquiSearch merch. That's going to be coming soon. So let me just introduce you to my uh, first guest. Uh, it's he. He is one of a few esteemed 
uh, guests that we have on, but he is the man, the director of Midwest EquiSearch, uh, Ohio chapter, Dave Rader. Dave, thank you for taking out your time on a Monday evening. It's been a long several days that you guys have been down in East Tennessee. Thank you for coming in here and talking to the audience, Dave. And, and again, it's my pleasure as always, Ron, to, uh, to come on your program and, and talk about uh, not you know bad things, but it's also good things as far as on, on how we do things. So again, it's, it's, it's our pleasure. Now, before I get the gang in here, uh, Dave, I wanted to just get you alone for a few minutes and just pick your brain apart for the audience. Uh, I got hundreds of questions. I'm going to spare you that. I have hundreds of questions. We'll get to them at a later date. But you guys are down there with one mission and one mission only, and that is to find Summer Wells. Uh, can you just talk in a brief overview before I add Gene and Twyla and, and, and our other guests? Uh, what was the mission statement and how... I mean, I know how this all came about because we talk every day, but there's folks all over the world here and all over the country. Uh, let them know, you know, the work that you and I did behind the scenes of talking to Tony and Hawkins County, getting this all, start us from the beginning and let everybody know what, how this all unfolded over the, the last few weeks. You, you know, the, the uh, you know, Ron, you've been instrumental as far as getting us put, put uh put in the spot to, that we were in on on uh on, on this past weekend of course by uh with your law enforcement background uh it, it was uh, very instrumental as talking to hawkins county uh, which then put us into not only the second in command uh, behind ronnie lawson but but also uh talking to uh the lead detective and you know they were a little bit apprehensive at first because they really don't. I don't think that they understood the, the capabilities of what this organization can actually bring to the table. Uh, but but I'll tell you, you, you know, we we finally convinced them to. They didn't ask us to come in. Uh, they allowed us uh, their blessings to come down and and, and put this together. Uh, and just in a nutshell, um, we made tremendous strides uh, this past weekend as far as on. Uh, I think Hawkins County, TBI, and, and everyone involved. Yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, many, many hours of conversation between you and I, like we talk about behind the scenes, and this is all you know, geared towards finding Summer Wells. There's no investigating of Don and Kansas. We, Kansas and Don, we don't care what they did. We just want to get to the bottom of where their daughter is, where Summer Wells. Uh, so that, to me, is, you know, it's something that we we have to realize that there is a big picture here, but there are there's there's people that are in place to take care of that, and we're leaving it up to TBI, FBI, and Hawkins County, and that was part of the trust that we needed to build with them. And I I felt between yourself and your organization's um, stellar um, you know reputation. Here we are, uh, 2012. You started in this thing with Tim Miller down in Florida, uh, you guys have, I have it written down here, never compromised any evidence in a recovery of any kind. That goes all the way back to the early days of Texas AquaSearch. You have searches that reach 1,860 plus outside of the country, 42 states, Aruba, uh, the Natalie Holloway case, Sri Lanka, Mexico, Jamaica, the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, um your organization has gone worldwide on searches and um you know law enforcement sometimes doesn't have this information these are some of the things that i spoke to tony allen and um you know the other you know, the lead investigator the the detectives on the case i i i not had it i didn't have to pitch this to him all i had to do was tell it to him from a law enforcement one brother to another and it worked uh i think well um, the drones are just, for me, is a, is a mind-blowing thing. Um, when Gene came on with us a couple of weeks ago, I was just tickled pink with that technology. And I know you knew what it was about because you had a military-grade drone in your arsenal. Uh, you didn't get to use it quite a bit, but now that you have folks like Gene and uh, our new uh, member to EquiSearch, uh, Midwest Chris, um, I'm going to bring the whole crew in. Uh, but folks, 
I, I know everybody wants to have answers. They want to know where did you, where did these guys go? What did they do? Uh, Dave, just just give them a little bit of an overview of the reasoning why you want to keep some stuff tight and close uh, from an equi search point of view, not law enforcement point of view. It's a matter of trust and things of that nature. But just let the folks know there's over 25, 2,900 people uh, watching, and they just they just kind of want answers of why we have to keep some of this stuff quiet and stealth like. Well, and again, it's an ongoing investigation, and, and that's one of the things that we are not going to compromise at any point in time is, is the integrity of this investigation. And that's why the trust factor between TBI, Hawkins County, and EquiSearch uh, is, 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 is so tight is because, we look, we really don't know uh, who all the players of the game are here. So the, the last thing that we want to do is divulge where we've been uh, for an object to be moved to where uh, we've searched, because once we would let that that cat out of the bag, uh, whoever did this um, could possibly move that uh, that evidence or uh, or somewhere to a place where we put out, and 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 and, and until somebody goes back into that area, uh, who could, God knows who when, um, you know, then then we're chasing a moving target in. And that's not something that we want to do. It's tough enough as it is right now. Right. So that's why we keep a lot of this stuff to our to ourselves and, and close to the vest, uh, because we really don't know who all the players of the game were. So I hope people understand that, uh, you know, they want to know where we were and, and why we were there. Uh, there's reasoning why we were where we were. But again, I'm not going to disclose this uh, to the general public. And, and, and I, I, I hope to God that they understand and I, I think that they would. Uh, it's because you know we want to find this girl. We don't want her to keep moving and uh, and be moved on us to where we, we we don't have that opportunity. Exactly. Yeah. You, you know, in layman's terms, you don't want to give the bad guy a heads up on what's That's going true. on. Um, let me uh, bring in Gene uh, uh, Robinson. He's been kind enough to wait in the green room. He's like, "Hey, I, I get paid overtime for this. Get me in here, uh, Gene. Thank you so much. You got you're still you're still muted on the board. So if you could just unmute." uh gene from sar drones welcome thank you so much for flying in from texas and lending a helping hand hey gene um how are you doing this evening everything good i'm doing pretty well ron thanks a bunch uh, i'm kind of recovering i didn't get back in until the wee hours of this morning uh, unfortunately i couldn't get some real early flights back in so uh, i'm a little loopy right now from uh you know lack of sleep but uh you know it's all good you know it's a uh, it's our lot right yeah overall can you tell the audience um how the mission went this weekend and um how, how how long were you guys up and in the air i know we could talk about days what you came in on saturday uh i believe right so did you take all of saturday and part of sunday on uh, flying some missions yeah, as a matter of fact, we, we'd kind of hoped that we'd get in early enough to be able to start flying on Friday. Uh, I always like to get as much of a jump on it as I can. But uh, unfortunately, by the time I got in, 4.30, 5 o'clock, and, you know, we're, we're photographers when you get right down to it. And when the sun starts going down and you start getting those deep shadows, you know, you, you just have to call it. So uh, we, we opted to go ahead and, and uh, regroup go back to the hotel, get the batteries charged back up and make sure we were all ready to go the next morning because by about nine or 10 o'clock, that's when we have prime time shooting. Right. And uh, luckily, you know, uh, Dave and crew and everybody was down there and they had a pretty good idea of where we wanted to go. And uh, I, I got to tell you, I was pretty lucky in that, uh, you know, Chris was with us, Chris Starnes and, and uh, he is a, he's a burgeoning, a uh, drone pilot, and uh, uh, he told me that he wants to learn everything that he can about doing search and rescue with drones. And I'm like, okay, here we go. Let's take a drink from the fire hose because it's going to be uh, a long two days. <laughs> and um, sure enough, uh, the good thing about it was is, is uh, the guy is local, and uh, he knew exactly where we needed to go. Uh, he was, you know, savvy with the drones. Uh, you know, even though he is, doesn't have just a whole lot of experience, you know, he knew the he knew the lingo and he had passed his part 107, which is, is a great step. 
And uh, we took off, jumped in his, his little car and we took off, stuffed all my birds in there and he had his two birds. And, and uh, we went out to uh, some areas that had been identified already. And uh, I think the last time we mentioned the, the near infrared that we were using and I brought my bird out. Uh, we, it, it's interesting because we had to do all these logistics. Dave ended up having to buy a set of batteries, he bought two sets of batteries, which was great. And then we had to get out there and then we had to get the batteries and the drones together. Then I would go out and fly my drone and we used the near infrared in this one area that was just completely infested with kudzu. Mm. Uh, and for those folks who don't know what kudzu is, it's an invasive Japanese vine that grows at like a foot a day. Wow. And uh, it was, we were hoping that we would see some changes in that with the near infrared. But uh, I, I think it has, it grows so fast and it, uh, uh, is, is such a healthy plant. Uh, it, it's literally like looking at a lake wow. because it, it goes that fast and it grows that deep. And uh, we really couldn't see anything of, of, of any interest, but we covered a, a, a real wide area. I mean, first thing off the bat Saturday morning and uh, Chris brought out his drones and, and his drones, he's got one that's equipped with RGB, which is red, green, blue imagery, which is what we take to, to look for colors, if you will. And uh, uh, he's also got one drone that's a dual that has both RGB and uh, FLIR, the thermal, which is different than the near infrared. Right. But uh, he got to fly his and, and uh, we brought the, the locate software to bear. And then uh, we, we met with, uh, with law enforcement and they said, you know, hey, there's this one area that we would really like you to fly. And we went way back up into the, the hollers and up the ridge. And, and uh, we flew the ridge line up there with uh, Chris's um, Mavic 2 Pro, which has a nice 20 megapixel imager on it. Wow. And uh, we, we got some fantastic imagery. We you know, had to, to, to show Chris a few things to tweak it a little bit. But once he got that down, it was rock and roll time. And uh, we ended up on that one mission, we ended up shooting six, over 680 images. Wow. Just the one mission. Uh, so I wanted, I wanted you not to interrupt you because you're on a roll, but um, let the audience know. And I know Dave is aware of this and so is Twyla. She's a search uh, uh, coordinator. I'm going to bring her on in a minute. Let the folks know that are watching um, how much ground as opposed to ground searching can a drone cover. You, you you spoke about this on the last live stream, but for those of you who weren't here to hear what Gene had to say, talk about the 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 massive amount of land coverage that these drones are capable of in a given day of say a four hour search and compare it to the same ground four hour search. What are you what are we looking at? in coverage wise well i can tell you that my drones can cover one square mile in about 20 to 25 minutes uh and that's 100 percent coverage now granted we can't look under tree canopies and we can't see through everything but we can we can collect trace evidence and that sort of thing in, in 20 to 25 minutes wow and i think i think dave would confirm it that if, if you were to do a shoulder to shoulder search uh, a line search on a square mile. Uh, it would take you a big chunk of the day, wouldn't it, Dave? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, and especially in the terrain that we were in, Gene, I mean, that bird was absolutely um, imperative that we use that because, like I said, um, the terrain up there was just absolutely unbearable. It's, it's just, it, for somebody that has never been to eastern Tennessee, now, you know, if it was all flat and everything, uh, easy peasy, uh, not a, a problem. Vertical, a lot of vertical stuff. And totally oh, uh, as a matter of fact, I think I even made a comment to one. It's like, who, who in the hell is going up that? And you said a bear. <laughs> <laughs> a bear. A bear. Uh, talk about the heat and those constraints on searchers, on foot searchers. You're you're in heavy gear. You're wearing long pants. Uh, you got to wear long sleeves, hats probably, and all different kinds of stuff. A drone doesn't know if it's 32 degrees Fahrenheit or uh, 88 degrees with 100 degree, 100 percent humidity. Uh, right. They're still pretty much going to perform within, you know, 
you know, I guess if you get really extreme temperatures, you you know, you, you might have some failure in the cold gene. Uh, what's the, the cold is probably the more uh, detrimental to batteries and that sort of thing. Right. Uh, you know, I, I have been out in, you know, five degree weather and the drone just said, nah, I'm not going. Yep. Hey, let me take a minute to say some something. Uh, Joe Murray's in the chat. Uh, he's recovering from COVID-19. He was hospitalized for a good four or five days. Uh, he's our defense attorney. Uh, Gene, we love to hate Joe, but we love him. He is the best. He's one of the best defense attorneys. Like, I, I can't say that I love a lot of defense attorneys, but Joe Murray, I freaking love him. Uh, so, Joe, uh, welcome home. I'm glad that you're on the mend. Uh, you know, uh, my my subscribers and friends here, they ask about you every day. Uh, Dave, Twyla, and the whole team, Gene, everybody's been asking about you, Joe. We need you back on the case. We need your arse in here, kid. So um, rest up and let's get you going. He's uh, already trying to write some legislation. Uh, some, he sent me some messages. He's already writing some stuff for you, Gene. So Joe's been working behind the scene on some stuff. Take that vitamin D, Joe. Take that vitamin D. Yeah. Vitamin D and Viagra, Joe. Just that that works. It all works good. Um, but yeah. Hey, Mike, can, I, can I say something as far as on, before we go moving on, as far as like with the heat? Yeah. Uh, you know, we had several searchers. Uh, Twyla came down with a massive headache. Uh, we had two, uh, two, two women that actually kind of went down because, you know, got very ill. Uh, from the heat on, on Saturday night after the search. Uh, so it really took a toll on uh, on some of our members. So, uh, you know, again, it's it's brutal out there. And, and some of the things that we had to go through, uh, you know, I you know, like I said, Twyla had a, a massive headache. Uh, one of the other girls, uh, both girls actually uh, got physically ill. So wow. um, it was brutal out there. So uh, again, you know, like I said, it's uh, it, it's it's not a fun scenario by any stretch of the imagination. And like I said, with Gene being able to cover that kind of area, um, you know, it's just it, it is it's just another tool in the arsenal that is is needed. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I can't say uh, enough good about what Gene, not only from his teaching standpoint, but the many, many years of, of, of service that he's put in into drone uh, search and recovery. He also put in 20 years in, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, in, in the military, right? No, or, no, 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 no. I only served one tour in the military. Okay, so one tour. All right. I'm an old guy, too, so I got a bad memory. Who is this handsome guy? <laughs> Gene, tell me who this is right here. Uh, now, now I, I've been in public safety for a while and, and doing work with the fire uh, the fire department and that sort of thing. But, yeah, military, I was one and done. But okay. uh, one of the things that uh, kind of helps in this particular situation is that it went into computers, into IT. Okay. So uh, the IT background that I have with uh, file structures and programs and stuff like that has really, really been a boon for me. And then I've been flying something since I was four years old. Wow. So, you know, my, my college education is that, you know, I'm a pilot and I was trained in aviation. And, you know, that's what that was what my career was going to be. But my eyesight knocked me out of that. Right. So, yeah, this, this little correction there, it was uh, uh, I actually went into the Air Force as a pilot. But because I didn't have a degree in animal husbandry, I couldn't fly a jet. So. Sure. Gotcha. Hey, but you still served our country, and I thank you for your service. You. Uh, before I get my head lobbed off, let me add in the director of the search coordinator, uh, Twyla Cisco. She's been waiting in the green room for a long time. She's like, hey, there's girl power back here. Let me get in here and say hi. Twyla, you're still muted, by the <laughs> way. Um, welcome in, Twyla, EquiSearch Midwest search uh, coordinator. Thank you so much, Twyla. I love love to conversate with you and our audience loves you as well thank you very very much i have to be here to control you guys how are you feeling my dear how i know you were cleared to travel for with covid and everything like that but i know uh you know traveling and searching takes its toll on you uh how how are you feeling my dear um i i feel better i feel a lot better uh, my motivation this weekend while we were out there was summer 
and like Dave had mentioned, I did get a terrible, terrible headache this past weekend, as well as several other of our members, but we were in some very rough stuff this weekend, and I think we just got in the mix of something bad, but as far as the COVID, you know, some days are good, some days are bad, and I just have to take it easy. My kids is what keeps me going, but COVID is absolutely nothing to play with whatsoever. I tell you, it's put quite a few of our good friends, uh, Joey Brooklyn, Joe Murray, yourself, uh, and, and and others. You know, I have so many people who send me messages, duty around, I'm recovering from COVID, you know, subscribers, followers, friends, people outside of the United States. So it's, it's nothing to joke around about, and this is your second around with it. So uh, stay healthy, stay well. Twyla, I want you to talk to the audience a little bit about some of the um, ground searches that you did to, uh, this weekend. And when did you come in, uh, on Thursday or Friday? I think it was Thursday, right? I got there um, Thursday night, and I got just a little bit of sleep and was up the next morning. Um, by 8 a.m., me and the other drone operator was out, and we were out just about all day long on Friday, um, just trying to get everything together. And then... Um, the people that we had this weekend from our organization, let me tell you something, they shined like the st superstars that they are because this stuff that we were in this weekend was absolutely horrible. And they did it. You know, we gave our direction that morning and these guys and girls went in there and I'm telling you, they gave their absolute all. There was not one minute that was wasted or anything this past weekend. And I'm telling you, they worked their tail off. We were in, you know, we had people in different areas and Gene and the other drone pilot. I'm telling you, they cleared a lot for us to actually see what they do and be right there in as it's in action i'm telling you what my mind was absolutely blown i mean his drone was picking up little flowers and leaves and i mean this guy i just want a small piece of his brain if something happens gene please nothing i hope nothing happens to you but we searched uh you know me and uh the other drone guy as well as two other people that i i'm not gonna put their names out there but they are absolute amazing angels also that's a part of how we got back in uh out there this weekend um, we did this Friday and then Saturday was a full day and then we did it yesterday. And after we all got done yesterday, we all drove back home. And I think one of the members that came, um, came from eight hours away. So it was a very long, very good weekend for summer. You know, and I got I got to say kudos to all the searchers who drive near and far. If it wasn't 9-11, I would have been down there and that's a 10 hour ride for me. And I plan to make that trip. Uh, when we come back there. There's been so many questions in the chat, and for those of you who are here in the chat, there's almost 4,000 folks watching. Uh, we thank you for the support. We thank you for all the questions. It, at the end, there's gonna be a 10 or 15 minute Q&A, uh, but I'm gonna pick one or two questions. Uh, in general, this will go to you, Twyla, um, so you're gonna have to unmute when you wanna answer. Uh, were dogs involved in the search, and are you uh, directed by law enforcement on this go around? Kind of where to go or were you guys doing your own thing and dave if, if you can't answer you can't answer the second part of that question i understand it so just just let us know you want me to answer yes yes ma'am um we did not have canines out this weekend um and i will tell you there was we did have um help with the proper officials uh TBI and Hawkins County Sheriff's Office, the detective that we had with us, he spent the full day with us on Saturday. And I will tell you one thing, I communicated with these uh, men uh, from the beginning before we even got there this weekend. It was all week and I'm telling you what, they are absolutely amazing. And I'm telling you, they are working their rear ends off and they are not giving up on summer. And I'm telling you, they are doing a lot of things, a lot of things behind the scene, a lot, a lot. But we did not have dogs out there this weekend, though. Excellent. OK, thank you for that, because there was a lot of redundant questions about that. So I wanted to kind of call that. Dave, I want you to introduce our next and final guest. He's the rookie of the hour. 
Uh, Gene's, uh, Gene's taking him under his wing. I want you to give him uh, an intro before we uh, bring him on. Uh, talk about how you met him, how did things develop, and uh, I've spoken to him gazillions of hours, uh, and I know you've spoken to him more than I have. Please let the audience know who we're about to introduce here. All right, so the, the, your next guest, Ron, is, uh, his name is Chris Starnes, and, and I'll tell you, um, what a breath of fresh air this kid is. Uh, you know, he, he, he jumped right in there. And, and I'll tell you a funny story is, is that he contacted us uh, early on and, and I, and I kind of blew him off as far as, you know, cause this wasn't our search and, and I couldn't give him the go ahead to, 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 you know, to use his drone. He was a drone operator and it wasn't my call to sit there and, uh, and, and utilize him. But I'll tell you what, what I know now, uh, my ass would have absolutely called him or I would have gotten his name and, and passed it along to the right, right person and tell them you're, you're crazy if you don't use this kid. So, uh, you know, Chris, you know, I never met, I, I never met the kid except by phone. Uh, there was many nights that we were talking until two, three o'clock in the morning, uh, going over areas. He would recon some areas because we weren't down there on, on scene. He lives down there. So, so this kid put his life on, on, on hold um and especially with a, a pregnant girlfriend uh you, you know he 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 gave his entire you know probably a week and a half uh, of all times during the day and night um uh, you know coordinating things and flights and, and getting me information and, and and things that i could start to do even before gene even hit the ground so uh with that being said uh you know uh he he uh, he is the next uh, mini Robinson, I'll, I'll call him. So, uh, Chris Starnes. Chris, what an intro uh, by the boss! Thank you for joining. Thank you for your service uh, to Midwest EquiSearch. Uh, welcome, Chris. That's fly boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ron, how you doing? Hey, uh, I'm doing great, and it's finally great to see you on a live video. You and I have spoken uh, along with Dave and Twyla and Gene quite a bit. Um, you spent quite a bit of time pr planning uh, this this uh, this mission that we were on, and uh, welcome aboard. I I'm so honored to have you as a part of the team here. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, it was definitely an, an honor to be able to to meet Dave and, and Gene and be able to just learn from, you know, the best. Gene is a, a great teacher. Um, you know, it, it was amazing just to get to see some of the things that he taught me that I, I never thought that, you know, would pertain to search and rescue and, and for using drones for, for this purpose. Amazing. Uh, talk a little bit about um, your weekend with Gene, uh, some of the things uh, that he maybe taught you. I'm going to remove Twyla and Dave and I, and I want you and Gene to yuck it up a little bit for the audience. Let everybody know uh, how this week went. I, I, Gene, if you want to take this, I don't know if you want to let the rookie go. Uh, it's up to you. I'm going to leave it up to you. I'm removing myself. I'm going to let Chris I'll launch with Chris and then uh, I'll follow up. Go ahead, bud. Yeah, so um, from the moment that I picked Gene up from the airport uh, on on Friday, it was just you know it was we hit it off right there. Um, we started you know we had a lot of the same interest uh, and you know so I started asking Gene questions uh, right off the bat. I wanted to know exactly you know what I needed to do to even be somewhat like him because this guy's amazing. So, you know, he started telling me everything uh, that I needed to know. Um, he started showing me a lot of things, you know, telling me how to deal with different people, um, what I needed to, you know, know about getting these drones in the air. And uh, so we started studying, uh, you know, what we were going to do in the car on the way from Knoxville. So, um, Gene, go, go right ahead and uh, you can continue. Yeah, we, we started planning like right away. And uh, it, it's one of those funny things that I had a lawyer that told me that when you get two geeks together, you know, they're like ants, you know, that the antennas are moving and you know they're communicating, but you have no idea what they're saying. And, uh, you know, Chris and I connected at that point and we, were, we started doing the planning and the logistics and where we needed to be and where the sun had to be and that sort of thing. And then, you know, I, I found out about his equipment 
And then I had to tell him about mine and, you know, what we could do it and how we would plan each mission. And uh, I mean, he was right there, stayed right there with me, uh, you know, to ask questions when it was necessary and, and pertinent. And uh, it, we just kind of stepped into it real easy to, to get into that position where when it came time to actually put the birds in the air and to start flying, we both knew what each other needed to do, which was a really, really kind of a good team sort of a situation to be in. Uh, we anticipated each other's moves and needs. And, uh, you know, when he was flying his drone, I supported him. And uh, when I was flying the, the Matrice, he was he was supporting me. Uh, so it was uh, it was one of those things that I, I immediately caught. You know, this, this guy has got, you know, some drive and some potential that if I can if I can not deconvince him. To continue it, because I told him I, I, several times, I said, you know, be careful for what you wish, because you know, you, th this is a situation where people can start making a lot of demands of you, and you know, you give up your holidays and you give up your weekends and that sort of thing. And I, I couldn't convince him otherwise after you know a couple of days, so I figured this guy's got some potential. So we kept going, and it worked great. I want the uh, audience to know these are the two, uh, well, senior drone operator Gene Robinson. He has been at this game for two decades or more, probably more. He's going to scold me right now, but you guys get the picture. He's been at this for a long time. Chris is uh, been operating drones for some time, but he is, uh, you know, a, a rookie to, to, to Gene and is learning from him. Uh, these are the two pilots that were on the Summerwell's search um, drone search this weekend with EquiSearch Midwest. If you're just joining, uh, Chris and Gene are our two drone operators. They are going to be uh, working with the organization going forward on probably many, many more missions. And again, what a great teacher for Chris to learn from. I've spoken uh, to Chris on many numerous different occasions, and he's so eager and willing to help and learn. Um, it, it, the sky's the limit. For this young man and as tim miller said to us uh when he was live with us it's getting harder and harder to retain good volunteers now for the audience here the equisearch is a 5013c and so is sar drones uh they operate on the the generous funding from the public and their funding doesn't go to pad in their pockets and lavish lifestyles it's for their equipment and for finding missing folks, finding people who go missing, finding people who are lost in the woods, et cetera, et cetera. The job and the the, the function that these guys do is um, nothing short of a hero. Uh, and Dave Rader, Twyla Cisco, and all of the volunteers, they rely on donations. And for anyone who proposes that, this is probably not something that you should be watching or being interested in, but this is what these folks do and this is they need the the help of us. And that's why here on Crime Time with Duty Ron, any super chats or Patreon or any type of fundage that comes into this channel, uh, when we do these live streams, it gets repurposed to Gene, to Dave and the great organization of EquiSearch Midwest. Um, again, I'm honored to have this distinguished panel here. Uh, there's so many questions coming in. We're at the 38 minute mark and someone's train horn is going off. We got a lot, we got a lot going on, Gene. Uh, are you, are you going to, you got to go to work and uh, ride the railroad? What, no, what? no, 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 no. We, we have our own, our own watchers and, and actually my organization is not called SAR drones. It's called, RP search services. So I was just getting, there was somebody sent me a deal and said, you know, Hey, you're RP search services. You're not SAR drone. So they just wanted to make that clarification. Thank you. Thank you for that. And you know, again, I'm not perfect by any means, but I was just reading on your, on your actual name. It says Gene S A R drones. So um, that's why I read that. So that, that, that well, you go this time, Ron. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna give partial blame to you as well. So okay. you might want to okay. take that person back. It's partially because I, I have it on my under my name. Anyways, no let's put let's put the small stuff aside. Um, Dave, 
uh, some of your takeaways from the kid, Chris, coming on in from the local. And and listen, he's a valuable asset to this search because he knows the lay of the land. He knows the people of the community there. And um, he grew up there. So he knows everything about what's going on. Talk talk about uh, the value and, and, and Chris's contribution this weekend. It was invaluable. Like I said, it was just uh, this kid came out of nowhere. And like you say, he, he knows uh, he knows all of these areas like the back of his hand. Um, and, and, and I, you know, when I turned him loose and when Twyla turned him loose to go get Gene, I, I didn't even worry about it. I didn't, there wasn't even going to be a hiccup. Um, you know, there was, uh, like I said, you know, they went and did their own thing. I didn't even have to worry about it. Uh, and the difficult thing that we, we were running into, Ron, is, is that, you know, the lack of cell service and communication, um, you know, again, the, this whole plan of action and, you know, the way it was executed, uh, damn near virtually without any kind of, of communication. I mean, once I hit a certain road, um, it was done. Matter of fact, in my in my truck, I have satellite radio. And when you lose satellite radio, you know you're, you're in a heap of trouble. So uh, there was never a hiccup as far as, you know, we had a game plan when we got together on Friday. Um, we made sure that everybody was on the same page and, and uh, on Saturday morning, we, uh, we put that into action and we executed it quite well. So it, it went off. Uh, and, and again, he was a very intricate part and uh, he, he was like, from what I understand with Gene, he was like a sponge and, and, and that's, uh, uh, that's important in this, uh, you know, in this game. So he's going to be a, a valuable uh, asset to us uh, moving forward. Excellent. Uh, that's so great to hear that because it, it, it makes me feel really good inside because this is a guy who has good talent for the future, not just for the here and now. This is uh, the future of uh, drone searches for this organization. Denise Balding, thank you for the $100 super chat. Thank you to uh, Tino Bambino. <laughs> Love that name. Keep searching. It's only five Keep searching. It's only five bucks. Okay. Well, we're still going to search whether you send a dollar or five dollars or no dollars. Uh, Pink, uh, Pinky Louise, thank you for the ten dollars super chat. Uh, Open minds. You all, you are all heroes. Thank you for what you do. Um, Police off the cuff. Bill Cannon, thank you for the twenty dollars super chat. I know I'm going to have to buy him a beer uh, somehow. That's coming out of my pocket. You know, that's a cop. That's cop stuff. Um, retired homicide detective sergeant. Open Minds, $10 Super Chat. You are all heroes. Thank you for all of what you do. Um, Twyla, I don't want you falling asleep on us, so I want to bring you, and I know she hates this, Dave, but I got to do it. Twyla, talk about your team, your search team. What kind of ground did you cover? You already talked about some of the some of the rough terrain. Um, law enforcement brought you to some some places. I know we can't speak about that. Uh, in particular, why they brought you to certain places, but talk about what your foot, the foot searching and the, the ground searching team did. I know Dave was there. Uh, Hulk Hogan uh, was there supervising everything. He, you, can ne you can never miss Dave. He's always there. He's got his truck. He's driving people around. He's like, uh, he's like a superhero. But talk about the ground searches. Everybody wants to know uh, how it went and, and what you guys did. Actually, Dave, this weekend was under my direction. I had him actually fill out a field activity report and everything as if he was a searcher because he had duties also that he needed to take care of with TBI. But these people that was there this weekend from our organization, and we actually had new members. Um, if you didn't know any better, you would have never known that the ones that was there that was new, that they were new. And... As I mentioned earlier, this terrain that we were in, when we go to Alabama, it's rough terrain. But this terrain that we were in this past weekend, I'm telling you, it was absolutely horrible. They went through trash. Uh, they moved a lot of different things. And I tell you what, I um, told my teammates, I was like, you know, 
when I got there and I seen what they were going to be going through and where they were going to have to search, I felt absolutely horrible knowing that I had to give direction to put these people in this area of where we were. And when I gave direction and they went over there, they seen it. Um, like I said, there was no complaints whatsoever. And at the end of the day, ap everybody was absolutely exhausted. Some of our members got sick. It was hot out there, no cell phone service. Um, but I'm telling you, they worked their fingers to the bone and we do, uh, we know where summer's not at. We know where she's not at and we're going to continue on. We're not going to give up. Um, we're going to continue on. And our members, I, I, I can't thank them enough for showing up and showing out the way they did this weekend. It was, everything was perfect. There was no hiccups and nothing. Every, everything was absolutely perfect. And let me tell you, at times it was very emotional um, because we are humans. We have hearts. There was tears that was shed and, and, I don't know. I, I feel like God was really with us this weekend because I, I feel like he led us to where we were and he was with us every step of the way because I cannot stress enough how bad this stuff was this weekend. I actually I think this is one of the worst ones that we've had that I've had or had to um, give direction with um, with the mess that they had to go through. It was, I can't stress that it was, it was awful, but we was, we was doing it. We had no problem doing it because we want to find her. We want to find summer. And that's why we were there to, a, find, a, to find summer. A beautiful statement, Twyla. And, and, and you couldn't have said it any better. You know, we want to eliminate um, all of the places where summer is not. Uh, Dave, you talked about that on, on one of the first times you and I got together, and I was impressed by that statement. And I know you guys keep such good records and categor you, know, cate you categorize everything that you've done for future reference and for future searches. I want to point out that Trevor Lee, this is the college student. He's 19, going on 20. He is the ge young gentleman from the East Tennessee area who put up $2,000 of his own money for the reward fund. And I encourage everyone to not forget about that reward fund for Summer Wells. It's linked down below in the description on all of my videos. It's Civis Bank. And Trevor Lee started that, um, that movement. And I had him on twice, almost three times with us. Uh, if you want to count the phone call, uh, he called in. Uh, he puts in a $5 super chat. And this is a college kid. You guys are so wonderful. Glad to see great people doing everything possible for this sweet girl. God bless each and every one of you. God bless you, Trevor Lee. Thank you so much for your uh, donations and your 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 heart and soul is in it. Grace Green sends in a two hundred dollar super chat. She super chat. She says, "Positive power is beautiful. Positive power on both ends is beautiful." And I thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Free thinker Deb sends in a ten dollar super chat, and she says, "There aren't enough words." to express our sincere gratitude to the team. Thank you. You are all heroes. This is for you, Dave, and for Twyla and the whole crew, Gene, and every single searcher who has ever put boots on the ground or put an effort forward for EquiSearch Midwest and for EquiSearch, uh, Texas EquiSearch. You guys are heroes in your own minds and in your own right. I dodged bullets for 20 years in the New York City Police Department. I responded to World Trade Center, uh, the first bombing in 93, the second uh, attack in, in 2001. And I got to tell you, I put myself right in the same position with these men and women right here. They are equal, if not greater, in, in, than some of the things that I've done in my time. And I'm honored to lock arms with them. Uh, more super chats. Can I say something? You, Ron, are our, are our hero. You are. Um, we look at you as if you're you're us now. You're our family now, and you're our hero, and you are one of our angels. And let me tell you something. We we couldn't ask for anybody better to come along like you. You're our angels. And I do want to let everybody out there, our team, Gene, everybody, TBI, law enforcement, and the general public, summer is our baby now, and we are not going to stop. We are going to do everything we can to work hand in hand with TBI, any sheriff's department or anything to do whatever we can to bring our summer home. 
Amen to that. Amen to that. Navy vet, thank you for your service to our country. Praying to find summer to have peace. No one left behind. Navy vet, thank you for the $50 super chat. Much appreciated. Dave, anything else uh, that you want to add to it? I mean, uh, I mean, Twyla's really covered some great ground and, so, and has made some great statements here, but to piggyback a little bit on what she just said, and, you know, I, I think every case that I've seen and looked into what you've done, because I, I did my own little research before getting involved with you guys, it seems like your heart and soul and your whole team, not just you, but you're the drive of the uh, of the team because you're the, you're the leader, but I think you have complete compliance with all of your folks, whether they're brand new, uh, like Chris's and the two women that came down from other states, uh, or your seasoned vets who are down with you. I think everyone locks arms with you and and goes full force to to the to to get to finding the missing. That's uh, his commanding stature. It could be. It could be, or it could be those goldie locks, those golden locks that he has down. See, I'm not, uh, I'm not like, uh, I'm not blessed like this man. But um, yeah, Dave, you, you got a great crew, and it seems like you just emulate excellence in what you do. So, um, kudos. I don't know how you do it, but I love that you're doing it. I'm very blessed. Uh, I mean, I, I am so blessed in so many uh, different uh, facets of this diamond. Uh, it's incredible that uh, through through my journey uh, that the people that I've actually come across ha have been just, they have the heart of lions and, and the soul to do this. And they do it for the right reasons. Um, they do it for the missing. And, you know, and that goes for Jean and, and Dennis and Tammy Waters for with water. I mean, I, I have built... Um, a Rolodex of so many people in my journeys that, you know, in different States and, 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 and I would, I could never do what I'm doing without the, the, the backing of this team and the, and the drive that this team has, I, I would be dead in the water. I wouldn't even be doing this. Uh, there's, there's sometimes where I, I do want to give up um, because it is so stressful and uh, you, you, it's, it's very, you know, it's, um, it, it's hard to put into words on the, the the amount of time that it takes to to put all of this together is mind boggling, right. and and when you don't come up with what you're looking for, it's 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 a horrible feeling. You feel deflated or deflated. You feel um, depressed because you you've thrown everything that you possibly can. Uh, but then you you have this team that it's like you know what we we know where she's not uh, you know when we get that phone call we'll be ready to rock and roll uh, and, and and do this all over again uh, and, and I'm very blessed uh, to, to to have the people that I have uh, behind me to do this because without them there's there is no Dave Ritter and there's no EquiSearch Midwest. I, think I, I agree with I agree with him and I'm just going to give you an example of how tough this is and i didn't mean to interrupt you but yesterday um me and dave rode together to the locations that we needed to go to and i mean it was just complete silence because in our mind we are thinking you know where is this poor child and you know what are we missing here we're trying to put put this puzzle together and i'm telling you yesterday was so it was so difficult leaving from there. Like Dave says, we go in knowing what we're looking for and we're going to look for summer. And then when we leave and we don't have summer, uh, we know where she's not at, like I said, but at the same time, it really pulls on your heartstrings. I'm not, I'm not going to lie to you. I cried many times this weekend and I cried on my way home. Um, Dave's a crier too. And he'll tell you, it, it, it just, it really, it really, it really hurts. I'll tell you, it really, really does hurt. I think what Dave was trying to say, Twyla, and I, I agree with you 100%, we're, we're, we're all emotional. We get really attached to these things because this is not just we're searching for an object. We're searching for a little five-year-old girl. We're searching for a human being. Uh, Dave wears his heart on his sleeve, on his sleeve, and he puts his all into this. And 
he he sleeps very little and he juggles his everyday life so i gotta say you know uh dave you're just a human being and thank god you got a great team behind you in twyla myself chris uh, your support staff on your side with Linda and um, uh, lo lots of other people that we can't even mention here. The list would be too long. You got a great team behind you. But I wanted to mention Jennifer Nobles from California. She's from Bakersfield. She is instrumental in uh, helping uh, search for Orin and Orson West since here in Classic in Bakersfield. She sends in a $10 super chat and says, Duty Ron and EquiSearch, you are all so inspiring to the entire world. I just absolutely love what you all stand for. Jennifer, thank you for what you've done. She's put out over $2,000 to start out with for uh, Lamar um, signage for the boys, the, the highway signs, and I followed it up with her. Uh, we are going to try to get somehow us when things settle down here, we're going to get out there to California. We're going to search for the boys, and we're going to try to do our best in the future. We can't promise dates or times, but it's definitely on the radar with us, right, Mr. Radar? Uh, we're also looking into uh, communicating with Maya Miliete's family uh, because they can use a, dr a good drone search. That would probably be a one-day thing, uh, but we would like to help them if Chula Vista is uh, able to you know, reach out to us and we'll do that through Tim. Uh, uh, they're a little bit closer to Cali, uh, but I would get on a jet plane and uh, search for Orin Orson West any day of the week. Uh, anytime that we're ready to do that, I will be there. Um, I wanted to just catch up on some of these super chats because they're coming in a mile a minute. Uh, Rube, Rube baby says, has the Wells family responded positively to your help? With search for summer, this is to you, Dave. Are are all are all of you are amazing people? So she uh, she or he is asking, has the Wells family responded positively to your help? I guess when you arrived, can you talk about that, Dave? Um, uh, what what you know? What kind of interact in, interactions did you have with the Wells family? Um, actually, this weekend, you know, there was some things that was that Don had said and. Uh, again, Ian, uh, I actually got a chance to, to finally meet Don face to face on Saturday afternoon. Um, uh, her, uh, you know, as far as with him and Candace coming over to where we did uh, break for lunch at the church, um, they, they came over to have pizza with us and, uh, I hugged Candace and I went over to Don cause he came in secondary and, um, uh, we, we had a nice chat. We, uh, we we cleared the air once again. Uh, I'm not going to go into the uh, the specifics of that conversation, but um, you know, I, again, I, I guess the only thing that I can pretty much say is, is you know, he apologized, and and it's it's it, and again, I told him, and I don't mean no disrespect when I say this is, uh, it's not about Don, it's it's not about Candace, it's it's about Summer. So, and that's exactly what I told him. It's, it's it, everything else. It, it doesn't matter. Um, I, I'm there for, for his daughter. Uh, however, that plays out in, in 1617 of us from uh, as far away as is uh, Eastern uh, Tennessee and as far away as uh, South Carolina, Charleston, um, you know, those people put their lives on hold and he finally got to see what we were all about and i think it moved him a little bit you know uh, we took a group picture um we we asked them to dinner that night uh they they did come to dinner with us and um uh, it was just a relaxing time and uh, we broke bread and uh you know so so that's as far as i'm going to say but yes we did have a positive interaction with um candace I want to say one thing here to the the people that are listening. Um, this just goes to show you um, the the true um, the true focus of Dave. Listen, we here in Crime Time at Duty Ron Community EquiSearch. I'm a part of this organization now. I'm, I'm wearing the shirt. I'm here. I'm I'm, I'm with these folks. I'm a hundred percent with them. I have to say, we're not going to be paying attention to any hogwash or garbage that is going out there by. I don't care who it is. I don't care who's putting out negativity or saying bad stuff about Dave, whether it's Don, whether it's his family, whether it's someone who supports him. 
that means nothing. It's gibberish. It's white noise. It is not even something that is on our radar. We don't even pay attention to it. Uh, we're there for the focus of summer wells and summer wells only. Uh, so this is a testament to show what type of man Dave Rader is. Uh, Don was, you know, jabber jarring with some people. Uh, I, I, I listened to two, three minutes of it and I just clicked off of it. Uh, and then a few days later, Dave is breaking bread with him because this isn't about, like I said, a fight or an argument between words about people, what people perceive of certain situations. Everyone's perception is different. And that's what makes us human beings. But at the end of it all, uh, the one focus of this organization is to bring the missing home and lost is not alone. That's what this this organization is about, is finding the missing. Uh, Twyla's 100 million, gazillion percent dedicated to it. Gene, there's no question about his integrity uh, and Dave and the whole crew. So um, it just gives you guys a, a little bit of an example uh, from a leader, a guy like Dave Rader, who is someone to look up to. And I'm not saying that just because he's here. I don't get any financial support from Dave. As a matter of fact, whatever comes in here, I send it to him. So um, that's a testament to the dedication to my, for me and my community to EquiSearch and the great work that these folks are doing. If you're here and you want to support, it's a great thing to do, but I encourage you to go straight to EquiSearch Midwest's Facebook page. There's a pinned message there on how to donate. Go over to Gene Robinson. His website will be linked in my description. It's actually on dutyron.com. So I've hyperlinked Gene's and our organization, uh, Midwest EquiSearch. You can go to dutyron.com if you're confused and you don't know how to donate. There's a button there and you could just donate straight to these folks. And that's the best way to do it. Because when you send Super Chats here, um, YouTube and Google takes 30% of that. So it's better to just donate straight through PayPal. It goes right to them. It's a 501c3 organization. So your donation is tax deductible as well. You got to support these people uh, because they're doing God's work. And in God forbid, as Tim Miller said, I can guarantee you at least one or two people in this chat here is unfortunately going to have to call or look to utilize somebody like this, some type of search organization, because one of your family members, inevitably because of the numbers, could go missing. And Tim said it. When he said that, I was like, the hair on my arm started, stood up, and I was just like, holy shit. But he said it. You you heard him say it, Dave. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, I think we had a couple of thousand in the chat, and he was like, somebody here is going to need us. So uh, it's pretty powerful. I want to place... And, and, and again, you know, Ron, don't don't forget about the man that's above me, because I'll tell you what, that man is invaluable. Some of the things that he showed me uh, on, on on Saturday night was like, uh, wow, I, I was just absolutely, uh, I, I was absolutely dumbfounded. So please support Gene, because I'll tell you what, he is um, he, he is one hell of a man and, and, and on a mission, and he is a game changer in this, the way that the search industry is going to go. And, and he needs the funding just as much as what I do. But I'm not on here to collect money. I'm not here, here to, to beg for money. All I can tell you is, is that if I didn't have a damn uh, diamond uh, uh, pop a or a window to throw it out of, I'd still keep doing what I'm doing. I'd find a way in the same way with Gene. But again, the technology end of this is very expensive, and uh, if, if he can benefit by by uh, you know support, uh, you, you know the donations to sit there and make this happen for me and 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 whoever else, um, that that's what it's all about. It's it's you know we're all in this under one damn umbrella. We may have different roles, but we still have the same mission when it comes down to nuts and bolts. Absolutely, freaking lutely Gene, I want to do as planned, <clears throat> because we're up at the hour mark. Uh, I want to play this drone footage. Let me add the kid back, because he decided to come back. Hey, Chris, welcome back. It's good to have you, kiddo. I love the background with the drone. Is that uh, any particular drone? Is that yours, or is that uh, just a prop? So that is actually uh, Gene's Matrice 200. Can we um, see it again? Did you move out? Yeah, absolutely. So that's Gene's uh, Patrice 200. Is that a, is that Matrice. what he named it? 
Is that is that like a female name for it, or what is that? Is that <laughs> So that's his Matrice 200. Um, oh. That's that's what we put the near infrared camera on. So basically, you know how this would work is we would we would start with the RGB on my Mavic 2 Pro. We'd put it in the air. We'd set up a mapping mission, and we would run this mission. And um, you know it would take its pictures, fly back to us. And then I'd pull the card out, you know, hand it to Gene. He would uh, put it through a software called Locate. Um, this software is amazing. It 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 blew my mind when I saw it, and uh, you know, I, I had heard Dave talk about it many times, but it's something that you you think of and you're like, nah, you know, that can't do what they're saying it can do. But let me tell you, if there's an inch on the ground that we're looking for, that program will find it. Wow. So we would we would put it through the program you know we would look for a certain color and it would come back with hits on it you know um several hits here you know we'd look for something and at that point we would put my we would put my mavic 2 enterprise advance in the air um the advance is a great drone um it's you know it's got a 32x zoom on it we would um put in the gps coordinates for where we needed to go to look for this object of interest we'd go there and we wouldn't even have to fly near the ground. Uh, we would just zoom in on the object and either clear it or, you know, hey, Gene, what do you think? Do we need to walk out here to it? We need to see what it is. And, uh, you know, as long as me and him both cleared this object, then we would move on to the next object. This, uh, this program is amazing. It's, it's going to change the way that search and rescue is done. And, uh, you know, I would definitely love to be able to, um, you know, implement something like that here in East Tennessee to where, you know, we use it with first responders a lot quicker than, you know, 80, 90 days in. Um, I think it will definitely save lives. Sounds like a game changer to me. Um, uh, Gene, let's, I'm going to go full screen, but we're all going to be audio on here. So I'm going to make this full screen for user. Um, this is your, this is your footage, by the way, Chris, I know you're familiar with this. You sent this to me, I don't know, two weeks ago, a week and a half ago, you were doing some test flights. Uh, Gene, you want to just, uh, I'll go full screen and we'll pl press play and you can tell the folks what we're looking at here. You bet. This is uh, the uh, the dual, and that's the FLIR, which is the forward-looking infrared camera that Chris has on his bird. Those white spots down there, those are actually deer. So we can see deer. I mean, look at how clearly they show up. How, how much altitude is he at right now? Because I'm looking at a bunch of things, and some people would just say, well, what, is, what are we looking at? How high up is this? Is this 200 okay. feet? Is this? Yeah. If you look in the, the lower left-hand corner next to the green box, you see that uh, there is 218 feet, right? Oh, right there. That's that you got that right there. And then next to that, you've got uh, 145 feet. The... 218 feet is the distance the drone is away from the takeoff point. The H is the height. So the drone is at an altitude of 145 feet. So one of the things that uh, I, I kind of blew Dave's mind about on Saturday is that that uh, I'm working with the, uh, the developer, Locate. Um, he is at usri.ca. And uh, he is doing the same thing with this thermal and uh, Ron, we'll have to go into a little bit more detail on that one, but we're doing, we're, we're able to see differences of as little as two tenths of a degree. And uh, we're able to pull that out and, and to use that usefully as, as a part of the analysis that the human eye might not see. Now, in this particular case, that deer is just as bright as it can be because you have a nice cool night. And uh, the deer is, is probably 90 degrees, maybe 92 degrees skin temperature, and they show up great. But it's when you get to those, those points where there's a, like two or three degrees difference or even less, uh, then you got to have a computer. And uh, that's what we're working on now. And, and uh, I showed Dave and I showed Chris about how we could use thermal and produce 3D images, 3D graphs that show uh heat signatures on the ground and uh it it is it is truly mind-blowing what, 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 what are these different colors that are on the screen right now that he's cycling through okay the colors are palettes 
And the palettes are uh, a part of the tools that are in the camera itself. And if you'll notice right there in the middle, you see that very hot red spot. Okay. And that's what is the, 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 the palette is there to help you identify it. The, uh, um, the, the classic FLIR, you can do white hot or red hot. White, I'm sorry, white hot or black hot. I'm sitting there looking at that red dot. Uh, and, and that's typically the way it was. They've added these colors in there to them to give them a gradient so that they would pop more, so, so that you would notice it uh, a lot easier on the screen. So this target is set on the object, that little um, that little target where it says 74 degrees, 74.4 degrees Fahrenheit. He has this red dot, and that's, I guess, where he's um, zoning in on that object where he could zoom straight into it? That's correct, and that's uh, the isotherm, which gives you the direct readout of the temperature of, of the item? whatever that crosshair is on. Wow. Okay. So for those of you who are watching, uh, this is some of the technology and this is probably not, you know, there's probably a gazillion more high tech uh, items that could go on a, on, a, on a drone. But this is fascinating because he's up 200 and some odd feet and he's focused in on an item or an object and it's giving you the actual body temperature of this animal right now. So I'm going to let the rest of this play. This is this is unbelievable technology. And yeah, you can see when the temperature drops down to 60, 61 degrees, that's the ground. That's the ground temperature. And then the differential that you see is the figure that's given off the heat. Yeah. So you've got a good 16 degrees difference there. And, th and that's a great use of thermal. And trust me, when we can be, you know, Ron, I wrote a book called First to Deploy. And I honestly believe that a drone should be the first to deploy in every instance in public safety. I don't care whether it's a search or a crime scene or anything else. You can't convince me otherwise that a drone shouldn't be first and that we should go out there and collect data before the first foot touches the ground in that scene. Yeah, and I can't argue with that because I think this is a really <clears throat> valuable tool in the first couple of hours, in the first eight hours. If Absolutely. Someone, someone goes missing. So here's an example. Chris, you're doing a great job with this demonstration. Uh, kudos to you, Chris. Um, so he's on ground and it's 58 degrees. You see those white dots. Those are uh, animals grazing in the pasture or wherever they are. It's nighttime. So these deer are, he's going to hover over them and you're going to see the temperature change uh, as he puts the, um, as he puts it over them. So let's let this play. Ron, I would, I would like to chime in real, real quick and just let the audience know. I don't think people quite grasp what, what this is. If, if you're in this location right now, flying a drone, it is pitch dark. You can't see your hand in front of your face at this location. So, this is a very powerful tool and it's very valuable. You know, if, if you get this in the air and someone's out in a field like this, imagine how quickly you can find them. And, you know, flashlights is, isn't enough. You get a drone in the air, just like Gene said, first to deploy. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really going to save lives. I, I agree hundred percent. This is going to be amazing. Cause I watched this acute quite a few times. Watch this 59 degrees, 60. 61, 60 degrees, point one. Watch this. Chris, are you just teasing me now? <laughs> It'll get on there. There we go. 74.7. Uh, truly amazing. This is pitch black. And you could see clearly here. There's road right up, uh, right ab above, right ahead here. So, I don't know what is that? Maybe 200 yards uh, ahead, and then there's a small, looks like a dirt road there. Um, amazing, truly amazing. I think that uh, thermal is going to be um, looked at by the time we get finished with our studies using radiometrics. There, Ron, we're, we're doing that with the Texas State University and with the software. 
um, there's there's going to be some changes in perspective when it comes to using flare. Now, the, the cameras are extremely expensive. Like the one that I'm using, the HT2 that, that's on the, uh, the Matrice 200 that I have is, is $15,000 just for the camera. So, yeah, you know, it, and it's, it's something that, uh, you know, that, that you really have to work hard to get. The, the dual that, that Chris has there on his camera, I mean, it's, it's a much smaller sensor, but it still serves him well. And, you know, still the drone was half the price of that. Right. And so it's getting better. But uh, as we start bringing this, this military gear in, I mean, we have to pay the price, but, you know, the, the, the price is nothing. The first life that you saved, you've paid for it many times over. It's just amazing, amazing technology. And, uh, you know, again, it's a shame that these things cost a lot of money, but um, you get one or two of these in your arsenal and you are good to go. You could talk about saving many, many people's lives oh, yeah. early on and many, many recoveries. I mean, that's what we're talking about here for Summer Wells. You can see something that no searcher could get to because of safety. Let's just say for argument's sake, uh, I'm not saying this is what happened to Summer Wells, but I'm saying if if a scenario comes up where someone dumps a body down a, a ravine or a very, very steep drop off, you can't get somebody down there. You'd have to have someone, you know, uh, wire up, uh, rope up and go down. And it's dangerous. It's a dangerous uh, proposition. Yeah. You, you could take a drone if you got the clearance and fly yeah. it down there. Uh, let me put us all back on. So everybody, please put your clothes back on. Uh, Dave can never have a shirt on. He's always got to show those guns off. Um, let me show the super chat. Uh, Baby Elephant sends in a $30.99. Super chat, I believe there, there are quite a few true crime creators who care per- passionately about summer. And they show it in their own ways. But definitely Duty Ron is one of the best. <laughs> Thank you for that. Just so loved, baby girl. This is for Summer Moon Wells. Uh, thank you for that uh, super chat. Much appreciated. Um, yeah, man, this this is this is unbelievable. We're here at this an hour and fifteen minutes. I promised Dave forty minutes. Twyla said, uh, "I'll stay on all night with you." Gene said, "I got to get to bed soon." Uh, so, <laughs> thank you, uh, guys. Uh, Dave, I'm gonna I'm gonna do as promised. I'm gonna look to the chat. For 15, uh, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Can you guys stay another 10? And we will field some questions. So please write in these questions. We cannot answer anything in regards to any other family members, but if you have something pertaining to the search for Summer Wells, put it on in the chat. I'm going to be looking for it. And let me look at the private chat because Josh is here. Um Oh, okay. This is Gene. Gene, you're yucking it up with Josh in the, in the private chat. <laughs> I, I almost started reading this. This is this is like they're exchanging phone numbers and emails. And wow, you guys are you guys are busy. All right, let me look at the chat. Uh, does does the drones locate a cadaver? A cadaver. Um, Gene, I'll yeah. like that one. Yeah, I I can tell you that, um, you know, the research that we're doing out there at the Texas State University has been very instrumental in that. Um, We can, without getting too gruesome about it, but, uh, you know, when a person expires out in the, in the, in in the, out there, uh, they will cool off and become, you know, same temperature as the ground after about a day. But then when natural processes start taking off, you start, uh, generating heat. And uh, after that, yes, uh, it is, the thermal imager will pick up a cadaver very quickly. And uh, you can, it's, it's very apparent. Uh, ask me how I know. Uh, and uh, that's a part of the research that we're doing out there to not only help find cadavers on the surface, but we can also find them below ground, believe it or not. Uh, and that was... <laughs> That was some of the stuff that I was showing Dave Saturday night and, and Chris. And uh, yeah, it'll it'll just blow your mind some of the things that we've already discovered. And uh, we'll be coming out that with that pretty soon. That's a, a, a project that we're working on with the NIJ. So yes, we can. Wow. Amazing. And Jamie Johnson says, Gene, 
how long does it take to analyze the drone footage? Okay, and that's been an issue. Uh, my, my lovely wife is probably one of the best squints in the world, and uh, she takes about two minutes to look at one image. Well, you know, if you have 300 images, that's 600 minutes, and that's just too long. Um, that's why we use Locate as a, an image analysis tool. And uh, if we're looking for a specific color or something uh, of that nature that's anomalous, then it will do it. It will do four images per second. Wow. So when we use that, and, and, and that's what uh, Chris and, and Dave got to get a good dose of this weekend. And we went through literally thousands of images this weekend right there on the spot. I broke my computer out and we ran them. And uh, like, like Chris said, we see something that we wanted to go look at. We could send his drone out to the, uh, the um, GPS coordinates and he could zoom in on it. And, and that was the way a drone team should work. Yeah. I mean, that's so encouraging to hear that because, you know, you think first time on the scene, you yourself working with Chris, uh, and that's encouraging because when things are a well-oiled machine and everything works good um, and you make progress. Uh, someone asks, uh, Lisa says, was any items of interest found? I'll let Twyla take that. Twyla? Um, with all due respect, uh, I can't confirm whether there was or was not anything of interest found because this is an open investigation and we cannot answer any questions to that nature and i really do apologize i love it never have to apologize for keeping the integrity of this investigation solid um kristen uh haker i know i just hacked up your name hakier haker uh she says experience with working in the line of gsd and mouths how can i volunteer for mock searches question mark thank you to the drone operators please excuse me not all dog folks are fit for human consumption but, thank you for the hundred dollar super chat <laughs> Anybody but, want to take that? Yeah, I have a GSD too, and I've trained a, a, a cadaver dog, and I know exactly what Kirsten is talking about. And she said, "Not all dog folks are fit for human consumption," and, and yeah, we understand that. Uh, but uh, more importantly, uh, there are some dog handlers that don't like to be around drones because one, it distracts the dog, and two, it can actually blow the scent around if the if the drone is low enough. Because, uh, you know, you, you work the wind and you try to work that. So it would be very important for both your GSD and your Mal, uh, your, your Malinois, to work with a drone team and get used to it so that they wouldn't be distracted. And that uh, you could help direct the drone team so that they don't get into your scent path. So mm -hmm. that would be my recommendation. Outstanding. That's a good answer there. I appreciate it. So I'm looking at the chat and I'm not really paying attention. I'm trying to find a couple of questions because we got a, a couple two, two or three more minutes um some folks are asking dave raider this <laughs> these are redundant ones are you single yeah we know he is he's, he's single but he's confused he doesn't know what's going on dave doesn't uh, he doesn't have time to think about ladies he has he has just time to plan so ladies oh i think about him but i just I, you know that's a whole different ballgame Easy, cowboy. This is a family show. Um, <laughs> um, Dave, seriously, this is a question for you. It's been redundantly asked in the chat. Um, will you come back? And, and my and, and my answer is always going to be absolutely. If I'm needed down there and I'm wanted down there and uh, until this little girl is found, uh, if we can assist in any way, shape, or form, I absolutely, uh, and, and I think that I can uh, honestly say that uh, from from the team members, uh, from what's on this panel and, and probably what's listening and watching, uh, absolutely, 100%. Excellent. All right, I hope that answers those questions. Um, one of the ladies asked, how old is Chris? He's got a pregnant girlfriend. Leave him alone. Um, duty Ron, how do you find the cadaver, cadaver? Uh, because obviously the temperature is different than normal. Also, to piggyback on that, Twyla, um, they say that there's many dead animals out there. How do you decipher whether there could be a body underneath a dead animal? Um, how, how is that process done in, in, in 
have you guys come across anything like that? And can you talk about that, Twyla? Um, respectfully, I would like to not talk about that. Okay. But I will tell you one thing. We have some very, very, very experienced people in that category. And I'd much rather not speak on that. Right. Some of the inquiring minds and some of the uh, people that um, uh, like daytime soap operas are asking, uh, did, how did Dave and Twyla in, uh, initially meet? What compelled them to work on EquiSearch together? And that comes in from Josh for Nancy Drew. I actually got involved with EquiSearch um, uh, through Joe Clyde Daniels case out in Tennessee. He's still missing. He was five years old at the time he went missing. And I had tried to get involved with the organization for a little while, but I was getting like dead ends. And I finally got in through actually Brian that came on with the dogs. He was the one who actually him and another girl in Tennessee is the one who actually got me involved. And then it, it just started from there. But I'll tell you one day, I didn't, I had never met Dave, but I was on the team and he was out, you know, taking care of himself or whatever for a little while. And Dave called me one morning and I didn't have his phone number programmed in my, programmed in my phone. And I was like, what? And he just sat there in silence. And then I was like, who is this? And he told me who he was. And I was like, whoops, I'm sorry. But yeah, that's how it happened. And been going ever since. Fascinating. Okay. I hope that puts everyone's mind at ease. Um, Here's a question on the board. Crazy Girl Oddities and Adventures. Thank you for your question. At Duty Ron, can you ask if they check the wells and caves? Um, Dave, can you speak on that? Uh, were any wells or caves uh, searched in the past or currently on the weekend, or can you not comment on that? Um, all avenues are, uh, are being investigated. Okay, so everything's open. Um, they basically can't, can't comment on it, but if they're there searching, you can bet your bottom dollar uh, they're working with law enforcement and they're going to be directing them into areas of interest that will not be discussed in the general public. And you guys have to understand that. So I know you're not going to get your fill of Jerry Springer here on Crime Time with Duty Ron or EquiSearch Midwest, but understand it's all about being professional and never compromising anything with the case uh so uh, again i thank you for those questions um just want to search for a couple of more uh someone's asking someone's saying thanks for the joe clyde daniels case a uh, biker girl of georgia is sending props to you guys on that case i know you guys worked hard on it um there's another question from uh, curious kiwi are there more people being trained up to use the drones and reading the data Gene. As a matter of fact, um, I got to get to bed because I start my next training class tomorrow morning at 0800. So, uh, yes, we uh, I am trying to get as many people involved and working with the Austin Community College here. And we just graduated a class um, two weeks ago. It's a it's an eight week course. So, uh, yes, we are training new drone pilots and uh, both civilian and, and law enforcement or public safety. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for that, Gene. Yeah. I'm going to let you run. I know you got uh, work to do in the morning. Thank you. I want you to please come back if you will. Um, definitely, everyone, look at the link description down below on how to donate to his great organization and what he's doing. Gene, thank you for all you do. Um, and I know that I speak on behalf of a whole panel here. We appreciate tremendously your efforts and your work and all, everything that you do. And uh, I look forward to meeting you in the future, hopefully sooner than later. You bet. Love you guys. Take care. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye bye. See ya. What a great man. Uh, all right, guys. I think we answered a lot of questions. Um, I want to. I want to wrap it up. Chris has got. He's got work in the morning. I know he's a busy man too. Uh, Twyla, I know you got, you know, a lot of things that you got going on and, uh, Dave, man, I know we'll be on the phone after this thing is over anyway. So we'll be talking me and you, uh, guys, EquiSearch Midwest. Uh, this has been a recap of the search for summer wells. No, we have not fi found summer wells, but we have definitely eliminated the areas where she is not Dave, any final words for the troops 
anything for the audience? Still over three thousand watching. You, you know, uh, again, your your uh, your uh, uh, your listeners are just absolutely amazing to us, uh, and, and the questions and uh, the wanting to know, and, and this is such an educational program. Um, you know, it's it, it's it's a breath of fresh air as far as on 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 uh, you know, but there's there's only so deep we can go when answering things. So, um, you know, it's you know they're they're, they're phenomenal people. They they have generous hearts. Um, and again, I'm not on here to sit there and, and beg for donations. Uh, they're they're just in, they they know what it takes to sit there and. You know, look, I, we, we spent, uh, you know, I think to date right now, the three times that we've been there, we're well over $6,000. I mean, 1400 of it is just in Gene's uh, batteries that we just had to to, to find and, and to bring in just for him to fly this mission. So, uh, again, people don't understand how much it, it takes not only from a standpoint of hotels and gas and get people in from all over. Um, but you know, it's not about the money. It's, it's about the individual. And I can't stress that enough. It's, it's, um, look, I wish I didn't, uh, I wish I didn't have to do what I do. I mean, I, I could be doing so much other things and, uh, live a normal life, but this is this is my calling, and I can't walk away from it now. And, and like I said before, thank God for the team that I have behind me. Thank God for people like you, and thank God for the individuals that are out there that really truly understand what the hell we go through. So uh, I applaud them, and uh, I send all love. We want to also specially tip our caps to the um, Hawkins County Sheriff's Department. Uh, to the second in command, our good friend, uh, who Tony, who's been unbelievable with us and, uh, the lead detective TBI, FBI, and everybody who is tirelessly working behind the scenes to find out what happened to Summer Wells and everything is still on the, on the table. All people are still being looked at, uh, records are still coming back and there's a ton of investigation, uh, investigative data that's still being sorted through. And let me say this, Ron. I don't mean I don't want to interrupt you, but you know, John, uh, Detective Pruitt for Hawkins County, uh, that man uh, was out there all damn day with us. I mean, he he literally um, went through the woods. He he uh, he scouted some areas. He uh, was with us every step of the way. He literally went out there when Gene and, and Chris was out there to fly the drones just to see. Uh, what kind of technology, you know, anybody can sit there and fly a drone, well, except me, of course. Right. Um, anybody can sit there, and, and Chris can sit there and attest to that. He's, he's got my $150,000 uh, drone right now, so uh, hopefully he can sit there and, and teach me how to do this. But he was out there the whole day, and he seen firsthand not only the drone, but the technology that the drone was utilized for. So, um, you know, my hat's off to uh, to John. I mean, he, he didn't have to spend all day there, yeah. uh, but, but he did. So uh, I applaud them. And, uh, the special agent that was uh, for, for TBI, we didn't get a chance to shake hands or anything, but, uh, you know, he was all on board. And, um, and, and I know, you know, I tried to leave a, a message for, for John, and, and, and I did leave one on Tony's desk, but as you well know, Ron, on, on a Monday, yeah, uh, you know, there's a there's a boatload of things that uh, has to be uh, gone over. Yeah, I text Tony too, but I didn't get a response. But Twyla, go ahead. Here you go. You got the stage. Yes, that's right. Um, there is two very very special people that is working behind the scenes. I'm not going to give any type of information of who they are or what they do, but they played a very huge role in helping us get back out there to do what we do for summer and just know that those are also there's two other angels that are local that are doing very very interesting things that have been working behind the scenes to do a, a whole lot of things for summer and we want to give a huge you know thank you to them because they were a part of 
you know, getting us back out there this time. Outstanding. Yeah. Thank you to them. And I know who you're referring to, uh, great, great people and, um, God bless them for all of their time and effort that they're putting in. And, you know, it's all, everybody that's doing this is not getting paid. So it's a great, great thing, uh, for everyone to come together, you know, for one common goal. And that is to, uh, bring summer wells home and layer to rest. If that happens to be the case here. And I, I think strongly that that is going to be the case. Uh, we just need to find her and the only way this gets done is by hard work. And this is a this is definitely a difficult one, but we are definitely up to the task. Uh, Chris, any uh, any words for the troops? Yeah, you know, I just want to uh, to follow it up with something that uh, Twyla talked about at the beginning of the show. There was no time wasted in this search. Um, from the moment that I picked Gene up and we started planning what we were going to fly, we flew up until the very last minute we were looking at the time thinking about whether we were going to miss this plane or not and you know we had to get out of there so we packed up the drones got in the car and took him straight to the airport there was no time wasted in the search and uh you know we will continue to do whatever it takes uh you know whether that's with drones or um with foot searchers uh, whatever it takes we, you know we're going to bring this girl home Outstanding. Uh, and then folks were asking if we use walkie talkies. Absolutely. We do. Um, communication is paramount. And when you're out there in the middle of the field, you need to have uh, communication. So thank you for that question all the way from Bakersfield guys, as I always like to end these live streams, God bless the world. God bless the United States of America and God bless each and every one of us here in the chat and all victims of crime and their families because they're left to grieve their lost loved ones. And then we're there to help bring closure for those families. So again, I want to say thank you to Twyla, Dave, Chris, Gene, and all of the searchers, all of our law enforcement counterparts, and all of the community like here in the chat. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you will get all things Duty Run when I go live or upload another video. And please go over to dutyron.com and all of my social all one word duty run and hit the subscribe button follow me on social media i don't spread uh toxic rumors on social media i just share my videos that i put out and valid information and tips so guys thank you for spending almost two hours here with us i really appreciate it dave um twyla and chris i'll see you guys next time i know we'll be on the phone tomorrow yakking it up and talking about our next uh our next move so good night from new york good night from ohio Twyla, I don't know where you are. You're somewhere. Uh, it looks like you're outside. It's a secret, it's a secret when I am outside. Yep. Chris is in a secret remote location too. It was a pleasure having you guys on and uh, I look forward to our next stream together. Hopefully we'll have more news for everybody soon. Good night from New York City. Uh, Childs of Nana. Um, is that Childs? Childs of Nana. Thank you for the $10 super chat. We are on the way out. God bless everybody. Thank you. Peace.